All right, here we go. All right, hey everybody, and welcome to a free portfolio webinar with our very special guest artist, Vouter Tulp. Hey, Vouter, how's it going? Great. Uh, before we get started, I do want to let everybody know about our awesome um, extravaganza event that's going to happen um, next week. This is going to be really fun. You have to paint something with... Uh... Whoa, hold on. Hey, buddy. Okay, <laughs> so um, yeah, anyways, you are to paint a painting with the theme of an egg. And so in this, you can see my own version there. Um, this event will also have the amazing, the incredible senior artist at Marvel Studios, Anthony Francisco, there live to choose the winner. The winner is actually going to get a Wacom One from Wacom. You know, this is a sponsored event. It's awesome. A Wacom One wow. is pretty much like a small Cintiq monitor. So really, really great prize. And you can, um, you know, read everything here or rewind the video to see all the instructions here. All right. And last thing before we get started is the fact that we asked Router to come onto the stream because he's going to be doing an incredible workshop, an online workshop with Schoolism. So let me just play the trailer real quick right now. All right, perfect. Okay, so a few days ago, um, we asked for people to submit their portfolios, uh, some images from their portfolios, so we can give free uh, critique and free paint overs for anybody that wanted a paint over. Okay, so uh, we collected a few people. Um, there's obviously a ton of submissions, but we collected a few that we want to go over today. Okay. All sorts of different skill levels, all sorts of different you know levels of professionalism. It, this will be really fun. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's start off with the first one here. This one is Sophia Wang. Awesome illustration. Pawful mm -hmm. pudding is her <laughs> handle. Any thoughts? It's beautiful. Really great work. Uh, so. Well, you know what what is uh, I think interesting in in giving feedback. Um, what I think is al also important, actually, is to know what the artist wanted to express. You know, because you could say all sorts of things, but it, actually, you would need to know what's the thing the artist wants to express in order to know how you would critique it. Um, mm -hmm. But then, ov obviously. There are always things in terms of, of technique uh, you can can look at, um, but that that's something that I, I was just uh, thinking about. Um, you know, ba basically before before we started, you know, I thought mm -hmm. um, giving critique without having an assignment or, or a question is really a, a thing that you know I, I wouldn't want to offend anyone starting to say things while, when this may not even be what they would try to express. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. All right, let's turn off the stream and uh, we'll, we'll come back next time. <laughs> <laughs> April Fools, everybody. All right, we're gonna do this. So I was thinking, you know, first, wonderful illustration. Second, um, challenging angle and Third, I start to think, what is this painting about? And that is something that I was thinking about for many of these. It's like, what is this painting about? And so for me, what this painting is about is the stuff that she's holding, or this person, this being is holding in their hand, right? That's where all the attention is going. Uh, and then of course, the being is the secondary 
focus right there, right? So what I did here was first, I darkened a lot of the background and I lightened a lot of the elements there. And then next to that, I just made everything a lot cooler, right? Putting the focus onto that coral kind of heart kind of thing there. I, I think that's what the person is going for. It feels like a heart to me. Mm -hmm. Right? And just kind of steering the, the tension towards what I think the focus should be. It, it should be this. Absolutely. That's a good point. I, I also, you know, I think uh, the background here, the these uh, shapes, uh, maybe I should... So these shapes right here, um, you know, I I don't have a problem with, you know, there being a graphic shape behind her, even uh, though we don't even know what exactly that is. But uh, if you look at the image, uh, especially what you mentioned, you know, what you did was really basically uh, creating a, a visual exception, something that stands out from the rest. So that's where we look at first. Now, when we squint we can see that the value of this area is is almost as bright as this. So I think what I would do is, is darken that or blur that in, in a way that um, it, it wouldn't draw so much attention. So mm. this is very rough, obviously. But if, if we just remove that, I think the thing you uh, pointed out comes across even stronger because then we we see that even more. And, and also, you know, I, I like that still some light hits the, uh, the character here, but uh, this really is, is a strong, bright highlight that uh, doesn't necessarily serve a purpose. You know, you would want to have some light on the face because you also want to see the expression. Uh, and maybe you want to show, you know, because if everything is dark, it m might become a little too, uh, to uh, it had it would have too little variation there but uh, i would probably um you know maybe put something there maybe she if she would be holding a, a, a wand or anything and it it sticks out and we would see a highlight somewhere here with something on there mm. that would that is something that would make sense to me more than uh, the fin where it doesn't really add so much to the to the story very cool. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, the other thing that I just noticed is like the hair is kind of like a jellyfish, right? It almost feels like this is kind of like jellyfish kind of skin or something mm. mixed with hair. So that tells me like, oh, you know what? There's probably some really good opportunities to bring in, you know, the light passing through those like thin membrane kind of areas there, um, right? There might be something there as well yeah. that I feel like I would I would explore. Yeah, especially since a lot of the image is pretty dark. You know, a light behind her would would really help to bring out the silhouette a little a little more here and there. Mm -hmm. And then and then when I, I assume she's underwater, so uh, you know I like how these uh, these pieces float. Uh, but you could think, you know, uh, like we see in the hair, uh, we see this kind of movement happening, and that is something that you could oh, let me uh, like this. So you know that is something that you could emphasize. You could have that. Uh, basically that twirling motion in there a little more, finding some kind of a, a rhythm for those pieces that basically unifies this this whole image a little more. That's awesome. Yeah. I didn't think about that, but that makes perfect sense yeah. to have the, the clothes really show which direction she's going in and stuff like that. Uh, yeah, especially this, since she's underwater, you know, you can really play with, yeah. with that, you know, have, have these folds go, you know, back and forth. So you, you can really show a lot of depth and, and, and you know, create uh, a lot of interesting shapes, especially because it's underwater, you're not really uh, stuck to 
how it would behave with gravity. You can have it go up, down, and really focus on creating interesting uh, silhouettes. Awesome. Love it. Yeah. Masse, awesome. do you want to, is there anything that you want to add? Or we have a bunch here, so it's up to you. Mm -hmm. You know, no pressure. Um, yeah, no, I, I personally really love this piece. Um, it did stand out to me, so I just wanted to like bring it up. Um, I think for me, um, everything that you guys brought up is great. I think um, one thing that I noticed when I first looked at this um, painting was I think I kind of got confused um, about the form of her fin and where it bends because I guess like how at water you drew this line. This was this was kind of my first. Um, assumption that the body was, you know, going this way. But then if I look closely, I think... Um, or do you want to so draw out where... Because oh. I, I don't actually see the cursor <laughs> uh, okay. currently. Um, oh, it's because I didn't have the window open. I just want to add in the meantime that Sophia is here. Oh, um, hey, did Sophia. I say something, Sophia. but... <laughs> it's really oh, wonderful yeah. work. Yes, and, 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 Did you want to add anything to? Oh, no, it was not much. I mean, I could give some backstory on it where I was going for a Tongan sea goddess. So that's why she had more of the halo effect behind her. But. OK, cool. Cool. I feel like that element could be added in like a bit more in her, like what you have already over here. I, it'd be kind of nice to see it not maybe not throughout her fin but like um just a bit more because it's such a nice like design that's going on oh. it, it kind of plays mm. through just you know very lightly maybe not as you know bright as this because then it would get a bit too confusing but maybe if there's like subtle designs that kind of go throughout um but uh back to my point about the the torso and the fin um, in terms of readability, I wonder if, I feel like it might help if um, the ellipse on her waist is turned in a certain way to maybe show that the, the body is actually mm. going this way. Oh, I and see. Then, <laughs> yeah, I think... So um, em emphasize the, the twist there. Yeah, because I, um, Sophia, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think you meant to have the mm. body go like this, right? Yeah, yeah, I oh, did. Oh, yeah. That gets so difficult it, to read. Yeah, so, I mean, there's, I think what you have is great. Maybe there's just, like, a few adjustments that you can make. Perhaps it's, yeah, like, the, the torso part that, um, just to give that twist this way. And then maybe making um, the fin a bit more clear in terms of like like the moving some overlapped areas. Like maybe the cloth should go this way, and then the fin could go this way. Um, but yeah, that's kind of what I was thinking. But everything else is great. I, I really like all the little elements that you put into it, especially like the little accessories. I, I love little accessories like this. That kind of like adds a lot of um, personality to the characters. Yeah, Wonderful. looking at the, at, the, at the arm, actually, um, you know, I think this works really well in terms of silhouette. But if I look at, you know, I was just holding my hand like that and it's her hand is really uh, at exactly at the side of her body or maybe even a little further so if i would do that i'm i'm really stretching my arm to the side it wouldn't you know visually this works but it, i think oh. you know it, it would be more natural if she would be holding it in her hand right here or maybe even here i think you know that would mm -hmm. make a na more natural pose uh but I, I from this viewpoint, I think this this is a 
you know, especially graphically, this this works best in the drawing as it is right now, I think. But I just wanted to mention it that I suppose it, it's a little bit of a stretch for the arm. How do you know? How, were you a sea creature? Do you know the flexibility of a sea creature? <laughs> <laughs> uh, you're right. <laughs> Maybe they got special they shoulder They bent blades. their arms all the way, yeah. <laughs> well, thank you, you right. so much, Sophia, for your amazing painting. Yes. A shout out to Sophia. Yes, cool. yes. and, and for the, the courage of, of uh, you know, submitting. It's, it's, uh, it takes courage to put yourself out there, so awesome. Absolutely. And thank you for submitting because we all get to learn from uh, from your painting. So why don't we go to you want to go to the next one here, Richard Jacob, if you want to or Jacob Bo. Yes. Cool. So I see um, somebody has done a little paint over already, a little draw over. Oh, that would be me. Um... Overall, I, I love this piece because it's just so simple and so cute and it's like you can already picture like this whole story uh, going on. Um, and yeah, just the simplicity of it and, you know, especially like the body parts, the limbs. So cute. Uh, and I guess my one, like I just have a few small critiques and it would be, I think for the bottom one. Oh, shoot. Um, it would be um, nice if maybe the eyes were a bit more centered or like kind of leaning in towards the middle um, just to kind of show that like the snake is looking at the, the boy. Um, the other thing was um, when I first saw it, I, w I thought, I actually thought he was grabbing onto the snake, which was a bit... Um, yeah. Confusing. So what I thought might help is maybe if you put a separation between the snake and the boy and also perhaps like adding a bit of value right here so that um, there is this separation between him and the snake and there's like, a, you know, some gap between them. Um, the other small thing was just you know, it's very minor, but his uh, arm seems a bit too far and disconnected. Mm. And then the last thing was um, because there, it's such a minimal design, and I, I saw that he put, you know, orange and red. Um, I thought it might be nice if the boomerang was also lightly colored. Obviously not too saturated, but just to kind of like separate the boy from the boomerang. Mm. Yeah. It, I, I really like this style. It, you know, it, it feels like in a way you could say a lot about the anatomy uh, of, of this pose, but it reminds me a little bit of Sergio Aragones. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the, there, not everything is, is correct, but there's, uh, there's just so much fun in, in the way things are drawn. Um, so that I, I really like. I think, let's say, uh, this bottom drawing, you could also uh, oh, see. So why don't I see? Oh. I don't know. Some For some reason, I can't draw. Oh. Um... There, there. Yes, it's working. Okay. So you could also make this uh, more dark where you have instead of making this background darker having a silhouette maybe even darker mm. oh that's awesome mm -hmm. so then he stands out more and and another thing that i would probably do is we see the snake um and there, i think this is grass that's in front of him but uh since the uh, space around it is so small it almost seems like it's a part so I would you know, uh, extend that make sure that we really see this snake is is coming out of the grass so probably even where this kid is you know just 
create a little more room for, for the drawing. Maybe we can see a little bit more of the back of the snake. Maybe some uh, bright uh, grass in front of it. So it's a little more clear that the snake and the grass are, are two separate elements of this drawing. Mm. I think that, that would help to, to make things a little clearer. Love it. I, I'm drawing a little sketch on the side here, just thinking about your, your coarse, um, expressive characters, Bowder. I'm just mm -hmm. thinking about the, the plumb line there, where the weight is and everything, and shifting it over a bit more. And, you know, like I would have maybe grabbed this, this head here and just move it towards the side, right? Like it's more in mm. action. Uh, yes. Right. And, Stuff I learned from Wouter, you know. So, <laughs> oh yeah, it this works. Is, this is gonna be <laughs> kind of like, like this aspect of the character and stuff. That's what your workshop is gonna be about, right? Yes, yeah. To um, you know, f really the dynamics of of characters. So, for example, um, a lot of this the shapes. If if we just would focus on the shapes. Uh, you know, these are, are parallel lines, and um, you know you could distinguish static shapes, which are ninety degree angles, parallel lines, uh, circles, uh, versus dynamic shapes, which have much more. Uh, you know, everything is asymmetrical, and. You know, there can be a straight line, but it's opposed with a curve. And, you know, you can feel a sense of, of push or movement in, in those kinds of shapes. And sometimes just adding those kinds of shapes. So, for example, this triangle right here, if you would only change that to a, a more dynamic shape, you could already have a, a different feel of, you know, how that character is standing. Yeah, it's really interesting to see just like even a little push of a shape can add so much. Yeah, I think I, I in general, I, I try to think uh, maybe with with most parts in, in art from big to small, when it, it's about coloring, when it's about composition, when it's about shapes, you know, when you start, if these big shapes, you know, if it's just a triangle, but if that works to get a certain feeling in your design then you know if you stick to, hold on to that while you're adding more details and make it more uh more complex then it will still work because the the big shape will work well it's also really interesting like you started off with this shape that was extremely pushed right like for me i was looking at it like shoot that okay yeah i understand your point i almost felt like oh he's exaggerating his point because that's not gonna how's that gonna work and then you made it mm. work so that was really neat just bring in the the head in there to kind of balance everything and then yes yeah that's really cool is richard here in discord All right, maybe not. Maybe he'll <laughs> see the video later. Well, this was great, though. Really well done. Yes. Very cool yes. illustration. Um, you want to go to the next one here? Yeah. yeah. Let's go on to Dal Dali Dali Nap. Dali I think. Nap. Dali Nap. I think so. Oh, I see Dali Nap in the Discord too. Hey, are you there, Dali Nap? Or it has the state. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hello. 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 Hi. Fantastic. Well, wonderful job with this. There's such nice sensitivity to this character, which just makes yes. it just feel so delicate and um, mm -hmm. extra, you know, adds to the, the whimsicalness of it. So great job. Yeah, beautiful. Um, I 
can go first here. I did a little paint over just beforehand, right? So okay. one is to, it, you remember the very first one I dulled the, or I gave the red in the person's um, dress uh, more of a blue influence. So same thing with this, right? And the reason is because it's like these trees in the background, they're not blue. You know what I mean? But they look blue. So then if the light in this universe gets this blue, right? And makes brown things look this blue, what would it make, what would happen to this local object? Mm. Right, so I want to put the blue influence there after that. Just went a little darker. Um, and then after that, I want so to... So then if... Oh. Yeah, go ahead. You're going to say something? Okay, guess not. Um, yeah, and that's uh, that was pretty much as far as I got. But then when I got to this point, Dali Nap, I was like thinking, I wonder why you turned her face into the shadows. And I feel like I was there's something to, there. To it. Yeah. Yeah, I was, I was thinking the same thing. Also, this bright color here is, is pretty bright. So I would assume, you know, when everything else is so dark, um, you know, that shadow behind it would probably be a lot... Uh, be a lot darker as well. I'm not sure this is the right color. But and and I'm not sure if this is the the solution for for the painting. But I'm just trying to think. You know, logically, you know, it would almost seem that this is what would happen if the if the light source is so strong. Mm. So I'm I'm now just messing up the painting, but just to show that. You know, a strong light light source would have uh, quite a big impact on, on, you know, on the image. I think. And, and the light source again, wouldn't I, match everything else if it's that strong. Yeah, exactly. The, the you know maybe we would have some some shadow here, and this probably would be a lot brighter as well. Mm, if it were to be a direct. Um, strong source of light. Yeah, well, that's what this looks like to me. I'm I'm not sure, but I I understand that it doesn't make it a better painting because you know, especially the the face uh, w would completely disappear because of that. Mm. And something uh, something different would be that um, you know, I there is a subtlety to to this painting and. Uh, I, I really love that, but uh, in a way, I think uh, it could use a little more variety. That maybe just taste, but um, for example, um, if we would have, you know, some some shapes coming off here, or maybe even here, or you know, maybe some some f more flowers or grass that's more in the front. Mm -hmm. Maybe some shapes that, you know, or you, you have the small uh, mushrooms here. Maybe we can have some more of those creating some kind of pattern around this. Um, uh, right. Like one of those, what are they called? Fairy circles or something where the mushrooms yeah. grow in a circle. Or you can play a little with, with the shapes in order to, to create some, some rhythm around it so that we get a, a little more unity and, and we feel that there is more of a, a world around this, this mushroom uh, instead of being just a portrait of uh, a single mushroom. I find that that also helps give um, a sense of scale, um, especially like when things are around it, then you have something to compare it with. Um, mm, yeah. Like <laughs> this I gave this example to someone I knew um, about like, you know, things are relative, like, you know, you have to compare things. So if yeah. I was just standing in a photo, it's like, oh, okay, it's Masse. She's, 
you know, normal size. But then if I stand beside water, it's like, oh, I'm say it's really short. Because, <laughs> like, you know, when you're put, when you put something beside it, it's like it kind of shows how much smaller I am compared to you know other people. So I think adding that sort of like element does help kind of tell the story, but um, in a subtle way, like a subconscious way. Yes. Wonderful. Um, yeah, the other thing I was thinking of with all this, I love all this, by the way, I was thinking about the light and I was just thinking, you know, with this, with this scenario here, well, first, I, I feel like I would have made it a bit more like moonlight. So there's going to be a lot more influenced by the color of the light. Um, and then the next thing is, I would have loved to just play around with the idea that there's patches and that's too bright but there's patches of tone in this image or patches of you know foliage and whatnot that get a little bit of light coming through you know saying like there's patches of light coming into this forest maybe coming from the moon or whatever and up here in the foreground we're seeing just like an up close little patch of light. And guess what? There's a little fairy kind of person, mushroom person there, right? And that's kind of like the idea. So like, why is that light there? That's what I'm trying to get at, right? Mm. I'm trying to yeah. help. Yeah. yeah, basically what I'm doing is tr I'm adding a little more color. I think the the image uh, had, you know, you can have uh, a visual statement when it comes to color, but having a little variation around it. And then also uh, what I did here uh, with the dark lines, you know, I just drew these lines. They, they don't necessarily represent anything. But once you have this mushroom that is this clear shape, you can basically create shapes around it that make it an uh, interesting composition in terms of shapes. And then basically looking for an excuse to, uh, to, to find those shapes. For example, find branches or leaves that, that create these shapes. So then it's basically uh, working uh, backwards. You start with the, the design and then you're going to figure out what that design actually is. And also with the color uh, you know, I, I made this uh, transition from blue to purple. Uh, I think you could also do that with the, with the trees a little more. So maybe, uh, you know, if you think the light is coming from above, you could imagine the, the bottom parts of the trees are a little darker than the, the top part. So that, that way, maybe this is a little too dark in, in relationship to the, to the mushroom, but just as, a, as an idea, um, that way you can can create this transition and give a little more variation and also help to emphasize you know how the where the light is coming from you know if, if the light is coming from here maybe everything at the at the top part is a little brighter and everything at the bottom is is a little darker so that you can feel that light is coming from there throughout the entire image and not just on the mushroom itself i'm just coding a bit of this mushroom with the the general blue color that you have there and then mm -hmm. just um dialing back the opacity until it feels a little bit better you know just a little bit of influence sometimes when you traditionally paint you have this color that you just add into every color you're mixing just a tiny pinch of it to keep that connection mm -hmm. between one color mm -hmm. and the next mm -hmm. yeah. I, in terms of shapes i think you could push some of the shapes to make it more interesting now i don't think you want to go too far because the expression is is quite subtle but i think you know um you know, when these lines become too parallel, um, you know, you, you can push that and oh, maybe I should do this in red so it's clear. You know, if you push that variation a little more, I think you can create uh, more interesting shapes.
you know, this ha already has some, some interesting curves, but I think you could push that even more to make it visually more, more appealing even. You know, it's, I, I think back to when I was in college and the teacher would be like, everything I do, the person just be like, yeah, maybe just push it a bit more, just, just push it a bit more. And like, that never made sense to me, but seeing you actually draw it out, it's like, oh, okay, yeah, push it a bit more, you know? Well, this is actually an exercise in, in my new workout uh, course. And uh, I, I'm starting to feel this is, you know, as I'm doing it more often, it, it becomes a more and more important part in what I do. And if you just, you know, if you see uh, what I mentioned earlier, you know, the, the difference between static and dynamic shapes. If you see a shape like this, how can you make it more static? You know, you push towards more parallel line, less, less curved. If you see a curve, uh, uh, weaker angle if you want to push uh you know the the dynamics of that shape then you would do this and basically if with this principle you could go over all your designs and without even thinking of you know the the gesture or how things work together if you just think you know can i make this shape more dynamic you know that's basically what i'm doing i'm looking at this curve and i'm changing the curve and make it more curved than it than it was before pushing this curve pushing this curve in relationship to the curve that it was or in relationship to to the opposite line and it's a it's a really easy thing to do to make your designs really much more dynamic so i, th I think it's a, it's a really important thing to look at at shapes like that probably a good time to plug your uh workshop coming up your <laughs> online workshop it's all about mm -hmm. expressive characters with powder tulp mm -hmm. so check that out that's happening next week or the week after the week after yes april april 10th, 10th. there yes. you go you can buy your tickets at schoolism.com all right shall we go well, on to the next or sorry go ahead well going back to what you mentioned you know when your teacher said uh just push push it or or what, what did he say exactly? Everything was just like, uh, yeah, it's good. Just push it more. Push it more. You yeah, yeah. You more. know, if it's if it's just that remark, you you don't know what to do. So that's yeah. what I try try to uh, explain. Uh, hopefully uh, successful. But you know, that's why I try to show really what I'm doing. You know, making the difference between these lines, that relationship, and these lines, and these lines, and show that you know that. There is a, a thought but behind why I'm, I'm doing what I'm doing. And it's not just, you know, I'm drawing it like this and you should draw it like this. No, it's, it's a choice because you could also choose, for example, the trees behind here. They're static shapes. You know, there's not a, 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 one is not better than the other. It's just important to be aware of it. I think having static shapes like this, this, this rhythm, this pattern behind it, having that oppose the fluidity of this is is just working really well uh, you know visually it, it makes the fluidity of the mushroom even stronger so if you are aware of what kinds of shapes you are using you can use it to to improve the design you're creating brilliant brilliant shall we go yeah. on to the next one yes all right so this one is luke's next is Luke Snacks here? All right, well. I see Luke Snacks, but maybe they're shy. <laughs> okay, all right, no worries, no worries. <laughs> no problem. You can just sit back and uh, relax as we paint all over your painting. <laughs> 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 now this is, this is very interesting. What a trippy idea here. So, cool person in egg in boat uh, uh it looks like wow. kind of approaching a waterfall or something because there's mm -hmm. no edge to that so that i think that would be the first thing that i would want to clarify what's happening in this yes. image right because mm -hmm. if there is a waterfall then you're going to treat all th these watermarks differently as well yes mm. exactly 
that's what I thought because you see these lines and you expect a horizon to be higher because the boat would you know probably end you know the bottom part of the boat would be ending right here so it, it's pretty close to the to the end of the water so uh, exactly what you say that was the first thing I thought of if if, uh, if there is a waterfall there then then it should probably be clearer because uh, I'm I'm not uh, getting that uh, at this point how would you how would you push this composition Vouter? because you know it's such a symmetrical composition almost like more suited for like a, the inside of a giant church you know um, those kinds of scenes right? yeah I, I, I think uh, you know a, a symmetrical composition like this uh, that where the the main character is at the center really is uh, exactly as you mentioned like in a church or you know you can imagine in movies you often see the the ceo of a company positioned in the middle of of the room like this when something is really important you, you really want to center it that way um so uh i think that that can work but you have to make sure that uh it doesn't become too stiff because of it, I think. Um, I think most of all, uh, I would look for how can I make sure that uh, that it's clear, um, you know, because I can't see that this is a person in an ag in a boat, uh, but uh, in terms of the construction of it, I can't really see how that boat and that water works. So. Uh, probably would focus on on trying to fix that first and as i as i mentioned before i think i would uh put that horizon a little higher ah i like it you mm -hmm. can already kind of tell uh the effects of it Yeah, now it looks like it's just going down a lazy river. Yeah, I think that makes it makes it easier to to understand what's going on. Maybe wrap the boat around the egg even a little more. You see, a lot of times, like it's so cool to see um, when other people are doing paint overs and such because. A lot of times, if you get somebody really good, like yourself, um, sometimes it doesn't take much, right? It's just a tiny little thing here, a tiny mm. little thing there, and then all of a sudden, it looks totally different. That, that's the goal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, it really takes the, it like demystifies the, the mysteries of like how good art is done you know like after you see this it's like oh yeah i could do that i could raise the <laughs> horizon mm -hmm. what i'm doing up here is i just felt like a lot of the a lot of these lighter tones here um and the darker tones are kind of just put in there without giving it just a bit more thought into like okay well what does that shadow mean there you know like is it representing some sort of leaf? Is it representing the underside of, of one of these big leaves here? And really try to um, be more specific. Work it out. Work it out in your head. And then put down some more specific stuff of, like, this is how it works. It's not mm -hmm. just in this region. It's right here or whatever. Even as I try to kind of organize this a bit, it's actually quite difficult. Um, I would, most likely, I would actually just kind of do it over a little bit. Um, if I can add something. Yes. Um, Overall, it's a really cool piece. It makes you wonder, like, what the story's about, and like you, you know, seeing like all these little monkeys that are like, oh, there's this 
person in an egg. Like, what's going on? <laughs> um, a really cool concept. Uh, I think one thing that maybe it's less of a art, like technical thing, but it's more like in terms of um, set designing. But uh, for this boat, um, depending on which way it's going, if if it's going, you know, to the you know away from us from the viewer then i feel like um there should be certain elements in the boat that kind of indicate like okay it's supposed to go that way because mm -hmm. um it looks it, like the front seeing, yeah seeing now, this, now it now it does i i yeah. i'm adding this so you it's because i we have this pointy shape here it yeah. feels to me like that's the front yeah, yeah, that's perfect. And uh, things like that. It's like the small little uh, cues that um, give a piece more, you know, a sense of like, okay, I understand what's going on. Because um, when I first saw it, I thought um, it was going, you know, down a cliff and there's going to be a waterfall. So it would have made sense if the boat was turned around the other way. But now that water, you're adding that little ripple that's coming from the boat. It's just that that mm. really small like indication is what kind of makes a big difference. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You've saved them. Now you're <laughs> going <laughs> yeah. upstream. <laughs> exactly. Baby egg person. Oh my goodness. I would probably, by the way, change this uh, little mast here because uh, it it really uh, creates this tension. Maybe because of what I drew. Well, still, it, here it it's really in front of it because of the value. It it does work. Oh, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Ah, there it is. Um, but still, it feels like uh, I don't think the image really needs that. Mm. I think that would be be clearer if it's if if that's not there. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and really, when I look at that egg, I really want to stuff this character in that egg so it's like tight right mm. like that's how i kind of feel about it if i could scribble a little bit on top of this egg yeah person. or you know you are the master at posing do you want to do something like that like redraw no like, sh show me what, what you mean okay okay i'll show you what you mean and then you do it uh, <laughs> 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 okay so what i mean is like you know i am like thinking big funny mm. baby right big funny egg baby person going down the river and it's just like you know these like hands or whatever mm. and another hand over here or whatever and then the legs you know that kind of thing a cover his junk a little bit with another leg. <laughs> kind of like this, like, oh, this is an oversized baby in an egg and it's about to burst, you know? <laughs> I don't know. I kind of like that. Well, I, I think, um, you know, if you would change a little bit, you know, especially if you want to make him so big, if you would change a little bit, the angle oh. of what's going on. <laughs> you no, know, just tilt the egg and the boat. That's so funny. Then immediately you will get much more movement, you know, happening yeah. in that in that scene. Mm. Um, and obviously it depends what you want to express because maybe it needs to be a, this quiet scene. But you know, especially if he's really heavy, you may want to have it really, you know, have the water water line much higher so it almost sinks you know those, those kinds of things may mm -hmm. help and i i feel like i want the monkeys to either worship this egg being <laughs> or attack it you know i feel like they're a little right. too neutral over here mm. <laughs> um would you guys like to move on to the next one Oh, definitely. Yes. That That's was really, really fun. fun. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Next one is Guy. Guy, our regular. Oh, wow. These mm -hmm. are great. I love... Guy, I don't know if you're here, but. Um... Hey, guys. Hey, Hi. Guys. All right. Well, this is 
probably right up your alley. How about her? Do you want to? Yeah. Wow. Well, great work. These are really wonderful. What I really like is, you know, the silhouettes, they work really well. Uh, you know, can clearly see what's happening. Uh, the design itself has very nice shapes. And I also love, especially this one, uh, you know, the the gesture is is really specific. But it's, it's really uh, telling this story in, in such a clear way. I think that's really wonderful, uh, really beautiful drawing. Um, yeah, well, you know, in, in this one, um, you, you could push that stretch maybe a little more because um, in a way it feels, you know, what I think is you could push the, the contrast between, you know, the fact that this stretches and, you know, other parts of the design do not stretch that much. Um, so uh, for some reason I lost my pressure sensitivity. Ah, there it is. So. Mm -hmm. it really makes a difference when someone shows you compared to someone telling you or explaining to you mm -hmm. pick up a lot oh my microphone is off um, earlier, I was just saying that uh, as Rutter is drawing this, that this is what you get with the premium, you know, um, there's the premium kind of courses that you could take or the subscription. Subscription, you subscribe to all the, all the courses, you get to access all of them. Uh, but then there's the premium level where you pay a premium price, but you would get your instructor, like you'd get Vouter, actually drawing and painting on top of your stuff um, catering it and customizing his teaching towards your specific strengths and weaknesses. It's such a huge um, fast forward in learning when you can see somebody drawing mm -hmm. and painting your stuff. So what I'm trying to show here is that the, the contrast between part that stretches and a part that pinches. Well, here it's, it's, it's very obvious, obviously. The, the back compresses uh, against the the chest and the, this arm i would i would even you know think of this as one an entire stretch maybe even all the way towards the leg in this case um, i i drew it in front but i would think of it actually going to this line behind the leg because when you think of the foot right here well actually i changed it a little bit but if you think of the foot standing flat on the ground that's where the stretch is stronger here. I, I exaggerated the folds on that part because that's where we, we would see compression. So that's really how I try to look, you know, and, and again, going from large to small. So I'm thinking of this big stretch first uh, and then gradually trying to apply that same principle of which part stretch, you know, having the, the hand go in that direction, we have the wrist stretch, but we have, you know, this part compress. Uh, and you can apply that to, to the tiniest parts, you know, when you draw the eyes and the wrinkles and stuff, you can apply that same kind of, uh, that same principle. Uh, but it, it really comes down to trying to sh uh, find a way to show the, the difference between parts that, that stretch you know, like the elbow right here or parts that compress. And it starts with a line like this, but gradually, you know, you can add details and, and apply that to the folds in the clothing 
in the in the same way so that every little part starts to to work together uh, in in showing how certain parts are you can also say are relaxed you know this the, those curved lines right here they would emphasize that the, the the pants are hanging more loose there's no tension there where on this side you know it might be much more stretched things like that you can uh, add to to emphasize you know how this character moves and uh, really start sensing the the weight uh, in in that design does that make sense mm -hmm. thank That's you good. what do you think guy do you have any questions um I think I'm just going to end up watching it back and uh, uh, sort of applying it. I wanted to update this piece. It's about a year old now, so. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah. Great. Thank you so much. You're welcome. <laughs> Hope it helped. <laughs> great work. Yeah, yeah, you too, Router. Great work. Shit. That was great. You want to go yeah. on to um, the next one? Yeah. All right, this one's completely different. Which oh is wow! Why I'm yeah. really liking these Bobby, portfolios. You can take it away. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, first, I love this. This is totally like my jam. I love yeah. Kind of things. Um, what? Again, when I look at this piece, I first think about what is this piece about? You know, what am mm. I really kind of looking at here? And this one to me feels actually a bit more complex. It feels like what this piece is really about is, um, it's about the colorfulness of this creature, right? And so when I'm kind of looking at this creature, I'm thinking that it's actually quite a common thing that people might do you know, a lot of times, uh, professionals even, they'll paint with the right tones, but just not the right amount of that tone. And a lot of times, what we end up doing is just putting too much of what people might do. You know, a lot of times, Can um, somebody turn off the <laughs> microphone there? All right, okay, <laughs> I think we're back. Okay, so, um, yeah, the main thing here is that you want to, you know, still use that tone, but just don't have it everywhere so much. I think that's the main thing I would change about this is just to, you know, lighten up a lot of this stuff because it is this beautiful creature and we want to see into, the, into that darkness a bit more. That's how I kind of feel about it. Right, so these parts here. What do you mean when you say uh, there's too much of the same tone? Oh, I, I was saying like uh, it, there's different cases, but um, there's something that I've seen in, in just reviewing so many different paintings and such is that a lot of painters, you know, students to intermediate, sometimes even professionals, actually a lot of times even professionals, they use the extreme tone um, with not the right amount. And generally, they'll use too much of it, right? So mm. we still want to yeah. use those tones, but we just don't want to use so much of it. Uh, yeah. Sometimes, you know, you want to use a lot of it, like something like a Hellboy illustration or something, yeah. right? But yes. many times you're not. And that's what I got it. Kind of yes, about, got it. Right? Clear. Yeah. Yeah. So it's really about the balance. Yeah. Even just like dabbling in that green a little bit, right? Here's before. Look how dark that is now. Mm. Yeah. And this character, this painting, to me, is all about this wonderful, colorful kind of creature. And I would use that opportunity to show some texture with the shell here. Right, not make it like too even the painting. Show a bit more of that shell. 
and if I could plug my own course, this is exactly what I do in my own course. Why is it so easy for me to kind of do this stuff? Yeah, that's really great. Right, it's just a little bit. Yeah, but it it's helped, like look it at that. So much. This looks so smooth now. And then like that. Cool. Yeah. So does anybody want to add anything or we could go on to the next one? Well, up to you. The first thing I did was, was this just uh, for fun. Uh, but I do think that something like, you know, where there's a fly on his nose and, and his eyes look at the fly, it does make it. Uh, it, it gives a little story. Oh, that's to, funny. To can you image. move your cursor though um, to the oh, side, sorry. just so we can kind of? No, oh, your sorry. your cursor is like we we see a cursor right on the eyeball. If you move your oh. your it, cursor you, here, is this still because I uh, press down, just press down somewhere else, and then I'll go away. Or if you move your mouse. Um, somewhere on the canvas. Yes. And then click Moving down it. somewhere else, though. Oh, that's so weird. Oh. Yeah. So you moved it, and, but it's, okay. There you go. There you go. Okay. All yes. right. Bit of a delay. Okay. Well, this could be the thing, but it could al could also be, uh, you know, if I could also imagine if we would have a character standing behind him, you know, because he looks like he is reacting to something uh, and if you even if you just have a, a small hint of what that could be you know uh, I think that could could really help to to you know because the the whole painting has has been created already so if you have just a little bit more information you get a sense what this uh, painting could be about I think that could really help one small thing, uh, you know, that when I look at the shape of that hand, um, I would I would add a little more variation. You know, this curve right here feels, you know, a little too too rounded. You know, the the character seems more realistic. So I think having a little bit more realism in the in the shapes. No, I, I don't know if it need to be this much, but just a little uh, more shape um, yeah. that could help, and, and maybe even in the stick as well. You know, if if it's you know if it's a wooden stick, you know, a branch or something, and we have just a little variation that could really make that design a little more interesting. Mm -hmm. I guess it. it adds more organic feel to the stick as well. Yes. Rather than like a man-made. Um... Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is fun. Anybody, Masay, do you want to add anything else before, or anybody want to add anything um, else before the new one? Uh, I don't know. I don't know if I can give much advice on the paint overs, but I think um, in terms of storytelling, because um, this. Uh, person already has like these really cool designs it'd be nice to see it in maybe like subtle like m more of like I don't know if it's tribal or if it's like you know um, like a cultural like you know patterns but kind of adding that gives a sense of like oh he's from somewhere he's like maybe on mm. a journey and just adding those small elements might help just like yeah basically that's like, that's you know, also a story right just a little more mm -hmm. uh, idea of, of what the, the story is about. Mm -hmm. there, this is just, just uh, even another way you could do this. You know, I think there's so, so many different ways you could yeah. add a little story to that. Yeah. You know, but I, funny, I think, oh, okay. sorry, go ahead. I was just going to say real quick, it would be funny if it was in the reflection of the eyes what, hmm. what's making them stare like that so badly you know it's like <laughs> if you look real close you get rewarded with a funny story of like mm. what's actually happening there right mm. maybe it's a favorite <laughs> or like a really pretty turtle i don't know <laughs> <laughs> well I, I think it also uh uh you know i i it, 
Well, if you uh, don't have a clear story, then I think people will focus really on the technique. They will look at your painting and, and start looking, wow, how did he paint this? And so if it's only about the story, you could do a small scribble and, and convey that story. And uh, I'm, I'm just mentioning this because it can uh, take away some of the pressure of uh, when you want to present a painting. If there is more to it than just the technical skill, uh, it, become, it gives you a little more freedom and playfulness in how you paint things. And also it can help to give direction because if this would be, uh, you know, let's say a tribal uh, wanderer uh, of, of some sorts, you could think of, you know, okay, what kind of tribe, what, uh, what kind of visual language, what tribes are there, what tribe do I want to base this on? And it can help you to come up with a certain style or certain elements that you want to add. So it can also inform the, the design choices and make, make it a lot more fun and easier, actually. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've seen some ghosts. Yeah. Some uh, ghost that's I'm so glad funny. I'm not there. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Great. Shall we go on I to the next one? The next one looks, I haven't even yeah. seen this one, but it looks amazing. Just yeah, very down. beautiful. Oh, wow. That's beautiful. All right. Uh, looks like there's yes. some little marks on here um, already. Yes, that would be me. Um, so first of all, I love I love everything about this painting, just like the the wonder and like the little things like, you know, the jars and the books and the picture frame. It's just like it's like this place that you kind of want to visit um, and to kind of like add more of that um, believability. I was thinking uh, areas like the floor, just kind of being aware of that actually makes like a big difference too. So I was thinking, what if um, like the panels, if they weren't all, you know, symmetrical and aligned because uh, I actually installed my own uh, laminate floor. So I understand that like, you don't want to have things like, you know, so symmetrical to each other or like, you know, same pattern because it kind of just looks weird when you enter into the room. Um, so I was thinking like, just switching that up, um, kind of attracts a bit less attention to this area. Mm. Um, other parts were like, mm. even the shelf, I find that, um, in real life, like, even if you look at my shelf right now, there's different widths or uh, different heights, mm. um, depending on what you put on. So just switching that up a bit, like, you know, make things smaller, make things like, you know, taller, um, Oh, very add, nice like a bit of variety um and little things like you know even the cards right here at the very corner if you kind of like scatter it a bit it just seems less like organized um, yeah those are great notes yeah yeah it's just like it's just like really that. little things that i i personally like to look for and you know um make it seamless at the same time yeah, those are the things that really make it believable. Like, you know, the cards on the table, it feels like that's how they would look if someone lived there and, and played with it, but then walked away. Mm -hmm. it, it, it feels really very much alive. Really yeah. cool. And the other thing was, um, I feel like the wings, because, you know, it's like this really pretty girl. Um, I mean, the more you look at the painting, you kind of see like her reflection and there's actually no face and then she's holding um what looks like a knife i think um so she's not as innocent as you think she is Whoa, uh, so i think really? to add to that <laughs> since, to add to that innocence it'd be nice if the the feathers were perhaps a bit more um uh i guess tidied up a bit i mean of course if it's part of the story then maybe if like there's some ruffled up uh if there's some ruffled up leaves then uh, leaves <laughs> feathers then that would kind of add to the story mm. or to her narrative where's the reflection with no face uh right here oh oh like there's no body at all right or or because... i 
I realized there's like no face oh, in this area. So oh. I just thought that was kind of eerie in a way. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I actually didn't know that that was the hair with no face. Yeah. Mm. But yeah, that's what it looks like. No. Like, I would love to see a little indication of a bit of the other stuff too to help that along a little bit. Just like, oh, shoot, wrong layer. But, um, you know, just some faint, I don't know if that's okay in, in the rules of this universe, but, um, you know, just, just a bit more to piece it all together. Mm -hmm. yeah, I, so I feel, it's, to me, I, I, when I looked at it, I felt something is off with the perspective and I couldn't yeah. really tell, but I, I think... Uh, well, one thing is, uh, so this would be the the vanishing point, I think. So uh, this would be more or less our eye level. Um, then I think usually in in this one point perspective, the most of the parallel stuff is uh, is we don't have a vanishing point for that. I think mm -hmm. would be parallel. And then when I look at this and this. We, we suddenly have these angles here. So this would be the same, uh, in the same relationship to the horizon standing, per, you know, perpendicular to it. So I think having those lines uh, just horizontal would probably make this perspective feel more consistent, I think. Yeah, that's a really great point. So it's kind of like the mirror should actually probably be like something like this. Yes. Right. And everything's yes. just too stretched out everywhere. That's yes. a great point. What angle would you put this at? Because I feel like I would have lowered the horizon line quite a bit. Yes. You know, give her a little bit more power. Yes. Right right down there oh least. that's mm -hmm. interesting yeah yeah because you have so much of the floor here which uh well obviously that's possible but it i don't i, I don't know why I, I exactly but feels like this or yeah what you did makes more sense i do love the kind of it's like a vermeer kind of image you could almost see those black and white tiles here um but yeah, having the, the horizon a little lower would feel more natural to me. Mm. And you know, like uh, last time with the turtle, I was saying a lot of times we're using just too much or too little, like not the right amount of that extreme tone, but it is the correct tone a lot of times. It's just too much or too little. I feel like this is the same thing. There's just so much brightness everywhere here. You just want to figure out where where are those darker shadows, you know? Because mm. right now, the dress, it's just a little too one kind of value almost, you know? Or like, not enough values anyways. Mm. There needs yeah. to be something more. Right? I do I, I do need to say that the coloring the, the you know the palette is beautiful and also the the orange that's recurring here mm -hmm. um, I think there's a nice balance in the in the use of color in the image Absolutely agree What, what do you why would you uh, lower the horizon uh, because I uh, because she has bothers, a knife bothers me and I'm like, oh, she's <laughs> that I can't, can't really articulate why that would feel better. Oh, uh, because, you know, it's like right now we're looking down on her. I would mm, rather look slightly yeah. up on her, right? Mm. And also the knife, it's not where her head is. It's a little bit lower down. And you could really play with that whole entire concept yeah. there, right? To frame the knife a little better. Yes. Right? If we had a little square here. And if the horizon line was like more like down here or something, you have, you know, the person up here and then the knife and you're like, dang, what's she doing with that knife? And then things go into the distance a lot more, right? 
and then the mirror with no yeah. face. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Scary. Yeah, that well, what you're doing really is is thinking of story, how you want to express that feeling. I think the pose could also help with that because now she's it's almost like she's posing for us. And you can also think of, you know, what what is she doing with that knife? Uh, why why is she holding it? What what is she going to do? Uh, what has she just done? Things like that could could inform ideas for what the pose could be. Yeah, you know, uh, everybody listening, this is our very first, um, you know, portfolio group portfolio review paint over extra. Uh, <laughs> if anybody would love to see certain topics being talked about in the future, like paint overs for just environments or characters, or how do I do this? How do I do that? Put it in the chat or better yet, put in the comments of the video so I can just see them a lot easier. Um, yeah, let me know and we'll try to set that up. That's a great idea. It, mm -hmm. it, it can feel overwhelming when like, you know, we're, we're giving so many, you know, pointers at di all different things. So it would be nice if it's just like focused mm. on one thing, but I'm curious to hear what everyone's interested in. Yeah, it's great. It's a great job though. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Shall we Shall go on we... to the next one? Yes. <laughs> All right. Oh. Okay. So... Oh, yeah, I some sweet paint right. overs already. Yes, I did some sketches here. Maybe uh, should we show the share the original? Yes. Ah, there we go. So, yeah, these designs are so cute. And it, they did it for the fairy exchange link. Oh, cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let Great me see designs. if I can move it. There we go. So you can see it oh. next to it. That's awesome. Oh, here. I, I can also move this. Uh, oh, there you go. <laughs> there go. Yeah, so... Um, what I did, basically what I, what I mentioned earlier in terms of shapes, you know, where this is uh, part of a circle almost, I broke that up into angles and, and curves that have stronger uh, relationships, uh, pushed the, the gesture a little bit. So we do have that curve here, but I made sure that, you know, those lines really help to emphasize uh, that curve. Also, uh, wh when she's standing like that, I would assume this is the the leg she's leaning on most. This is this foot is there more for balance, but this is really more at the at the center of, of uh, underneath her body. So it would make sense for me that this foot would be coming towards us more. If you think of a ground plane, she would be standing on, um, and here I see almost the opposite. So in terms of perspective, that, that looks a little strange to me. So I think having the foot right there would, would be more consistent. Um, and then also, uh, when, you know, when you draw in, in simple shapes like this, it's also easier to, uh, to find those relationships and find uh, stronger overlaps so that, you know, for example, for the fire, we can create a shape that clearly uh, stands out from the, the shape that's wow. behind it. Yeah. And that's here cool. it, it, it merges a little more. So I think that is also something that, that you could push in and, and same here with this shape, you know, just pushing those, those lines and curves to, to create more that, that sense of movement in the design. It's amazing how much expressiveness you can get that you put into a person's just standing there, you know, like you gave those hips some attitude, right? <laughs> uh, you gave her arms some attitude and the changes with the hair and the fire, even though they're quite minimal, it, mm -hmm. it makes such a huge difference. It's like believability really is found so much in the subtleties of things. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Can you talk about the, the next one, the other sketch that you did there? 
Yes. Uh, so I, when I look, and actually that goes for all of these designs. When I look at, uh, let me see, the artist did in terms of shapes is really cool. We see really clear uh, design shapes, but they little they get a little in the way of each other, and because of that, we we may lose a little bit of the clarity. So. What I tried to do, I wasn't actually finished with this one, but if we look at those shapes and try to set them apart from each other a little more, uh, you know, and even, you know, when you want to have those ears, you know, if you, uh, you can basically do two things. You can uh, overlap them and make sure that you, you get, you make a clear distinction that one shape goes in front of another uh, and you don't want to do it like like this where those lines touch because we're uh, creating an illusion of dimensionality on a 2D plane and when these lines meet you can't see what goes in front of, of what so you need to either overlap it clearly or you want to separate it and then you can't see which one is closer to us but at least the design is clear. So basically that's what I would do with the ears right here. And actually with all of these shapes to make sure that, you know, the, the design shape comes across in a, in a clear way. It's very cool. So for example, here, this is a, a point where I, where I would extend that line a little bit to make sure that we have a, a, a clear overlap right there. I like how you changed the position of the leaf hat. It almost looks a bit more like a beret, kind of turned <laughs> yeah. a bit. It's very yeah. cool. Yeah, and uh, you know when you when you draw it like this, it becomes a really flattened design. But when you start adding those surface lines, you can bring back the the volume of it. Mm. Mm -hmm. with the face you know, basically with everything uh, it, it always amazes me how much you can how, how much you can do that really start with two-dimensional shapes and push them or start with a two-dimensional gesture and still push it towards uh, something that becomes um, more three-dimensional wonderful well, we did one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight paint overs today. That was pretty awesome. We're almost out of time. I'd love to open it up to the Discord community for any questions that you might have about anything at all regarding, hopefully regarding expressive characters and portfolios. <laughs> No questions. <laughs> <laughs> Before there were questions <laughs> about how uh, how does this work, and they were very curious oh. what kind of uh, images they could send. Um, well, any hmm. feedback about what we just did at all? Like, um, what would you like to see in the future? What did you really like about this that we could do more of in the future? Things like that. I personally learned a lot just by listening and watching. So I feel like I got a lot, a lot out yeah, of it. Yeah, me too. And I want to do more. <laughs> uh -huh. This was so, fun. Yeah, I really absolutely. liked this. Yeah. yeah. And it's really great just to see all the different styles and everything. and. Uh, you yeah. know, reviewing people's art, it is subjective, but it's also a fun mm. little puzzle. You know, it's like, okay, what could I do with this? Yeah. For me, it was quite amazing to see how um, those little things you notice and how fast you can improve actually an image. And uh, yeah, going three pros, going ham at, <laughs> at one image is uh, quite uh, amazing. Yeah. Thank cool. you. You're so welcome. Yeah. Well, I guess there's nothing left to do then except to say our thank yous. I want to thank 
Patricia that was just speaking. <laughs> I'd like to <laughs> thank all the uh, moderators in the Lightbox Expo Discord channel. Everybody in Discord, everybody in YouTube, my wonderful assistant, Jamie, thank you so much for helping with everything in YouTube. And uh, thank you to my co-host, Masse. And biggest thank you goes to our wonderful, uh, honored guest, uh, Wouter Tull. Check out thank his you. workshop. It's happening April 10th, and it's going to be great. It's all about expressive characters with Wouter Tulp, and you could check it out on Schoolism. Uh, sign up for the workshop. It's an online workshop. Can you tell people uh, about like how the workshop is going to go? Because people will have some assets, right, Wouter? Yes. Um, in, in the workshop, I will uh, start uh, explaining the, the principles of expressive character design. Uh, and basically, while I explain these things, uh, we will do little exercises so that you can uh, play around with with the principles that I'm explaining, so you get a feel for what exactly uh, I uh, I'm talking about, and and make it uh, you know part of your skill set. And with that, I I will show examples that we can draw over, uh, but we can also do little exercises and and I really want this to be a hands-on workshop where you can ask questions draw along with me and I will draw with you so uh, this is really going to be a lot of fun so I hope you will all join very interactive and if you can't wait for Vouter's workshop check out Vouter's courses you know he's got expressive characters on schoolism a workout a couple workouts and uh, I'm missing another course that you have what which one is it painting workout yes the painting workout which i love by the way it's so oh, specific in the exercises really geared towards stretching those brain muscles and getting them stronger mm -hmm. all right everybody well that's the end of our little show today let us know in the comments if you would like to see another portfolio review in the future and what kind of portfolio portfolios shall we review characters environments uh you know sci-fi whatever let us know cool all right take care everybody have a wonderful rest of your day <laughs> thank bye you bye. so much